can a string meant for one racket board be used for another? The answer for this experiment at least is a definite yes, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But first, two questions. One, what racket sports? Because that matters. I wouldn't put a badminton string in a tennis racket because it wouldn't last. And second, and this is a really important question, why do this to begin with? This is Gumzone by Gosen. It's used for a racket sport called soft tennis. Soft tennis is quite popular in South and Southeast Asia, but it originated in Japan. It's played on normal tennis courts, and the only real difference between it and regular tennis is that the balls are white and made of really soft rubber with no felt on them. And because of this, the rackets used in soft tennis are also different. They're essentially halfway between squash and tennis rackets. Typical head sizes tend to be around 90 square inches, the beams tend to be thinner uh, with much longer throats, and strung tensions tend to come in at around 25 to 35 pounds. I had never heard of soft tennis until I visited tennis shops in Japan on vacation a while back. As someone who plays a whole host of racket sports, soft tennis had my interest the moment I got to know about it. I think for those that have sensitive elbows or are suffering from chronic injuries, soft tennis is a totally legit way of getting back on court but in a much gentler setting. I have more to say on this, but that's a separate video, so stay tuned. What really caught my attention with soft tennis was the ball. It's remarkably similar to a squash ball, just bigger and less dense. I picked up a few to bring back home with me and here's a video of them up close because I don't have them with me since I'm traveling at the moment. The similarity between these two balls is what got me thinking if I could use equipment from these two different racket sports interchangeably. This is something I've done before with fantastic results. If you're curious, I'll leave this video down in the description right below that like button. Enter Gumzone, a pretty recent offering from Gosen meant for soft tennis. This is a nylon monofilament, which in plain English just means that it's your classic synthetic gut that's been extruded as one single fiber. But the unique thing about this is that it has a gum rubber coating on it. When you handle the string, it's impossible not to notice this gum rubber coating. It's such a unique feeling. The best way I can describe this is that it's like the rubber soles of indoor court shoes. It's a little slick to the touch, but when you clamp down on it with your fingers, it definitely grips. The reason for this coating is to increase the coefficient of friction with the ball, which should allow it to grab onto the ball more and result in more spin. You see where I'm going with this, right? If a soft tennis ball and a squash ball are so similar, and this gum rubber coating is supposed to help grip a soft tennis ball more for added spin, then maybe I can put the string in my squash racket and get more spin in my shots in squash too. This finally brings me to the question I posed earlier in the intro. Why do this to begin with? I currently play with the Ashaway Supernick ZX Micro, which is a fantastic string I've talked about before on this channel. That video is also linked down in the description right below that like button. One of the most underrated features of that string is that it has a textured outer wrap or coating. If you swing your racket fast enough, then you can definitely put some action on the ball. And it is this textured outer wrap that gives you that extra bite and grip to make your shots a bit more effective. It's honestly really wonderful. Once you learn how to make use of this grippy, textured outer wrap, it's kind of hard to go back. So, for someone like me, the prospect of an even more grippy outer layer is irresistible. If it means reaching over into another racket sport, so be it. So, did this little experiment work? Yes, it definitely did. But, would I switch? I'm not so sure. Let me explain by telling you how the playtest went. This string has a very different feel when you first play with it versus when it breaks in. Before breaking in, it has a very stiff boardy feel with little ball pocketing, but it has a very crisp feel with lots of vibrations that go down into your hand and your arm to let you know exactly how the ball and the string bed are interacting with each other. It feels like the string bed is strung tight, like really tight, as in 35 pounds or higher. I think this is mostly down to the string's monofilament construction, which lends itself to control and durability. But the good thing is, with the string in this state, I could not stop hitting straight lines. But after it breaks in, it seems to change character. It starts playing flexible with decent ball pocketing, although it never got close to the level of softness I'm used to from Super Nick ZX. That's understandable since Super Nick ZX is a multi-filament string, which naturally has more bend in it just due to the nature of its construction. That construction also lends itself to more easy power, more comfort, ball pocketing, and dwell time, which are all traits that I tend to favor. P.S. 
If you're looking for more power out of your setup, it's tempting to do the obvious and go for a softer string or to lower the tension or a thinner gauge or some combination of all of these three. But power from a string alone is a nuanced topic that requires you to understand string stiffness and the role it plays in its performance. I've got a whole video about it if you're curious. But in short, if you have good stroke mechanics and your arm can handle it and you identify with Nick Matthews or Mohamed El Shabagi's game, then go for a stiffer string at a lower tension. You're welcome. But what about that gum rubber coating? There's no doubt that this grabs the ball more, but to get that, you need to swing your racket fast, like really fast. I think this comes down to the string stiffer monofilament construction, which leads to a shorter dwell time. During my playtest, the ball just didn't seem to hang around long enough on the string bed for the gum rubber coating to grab onto the ball as much as I think it can. That's why you have to swing your racket really fast to get the best out of this gum rubber coating. To me, it feels like the interaction between the ball and the string bed happens on fast forward. So if your swing speed lags behind what I'm going to call the natural interaction time of gum zone, then you're never really going to get the best out of it. I think my analogy of shoe soles earlier was pretty on point. With light, slow footwork, rubber soles can slide on indoor courts, right? But if you come down fast and put your weight down in the right way, then they can grip on a dime. That's how this gum rubber coating performs. But I want to emphasize that I think this mostly comes down to the stiffer monofilament construction of this string. So the question is, what's a guy like me who prefers softer strings with longer dwell times to do? Luckily, there's another version of this string called Gum Boost, which replaces the monofilament nylon core with a multifilament one. I think that might actually give me what I was initially after. That review and playtest is coming up soon, so subscribe to stay up to date. For those watching who are already interested in trying this out for themselves, this isn't really available outside of Japan and Southeast Asia. There are ways around this, for example, services in Japan that buy things on your behalf and then ship them internationally to you, but I personally haven't tried one out yet, although I do intend to do so, and when I find one I can recommend, I'll update the description down below. Until then, hopefully you can get a few sets if you visit Japan or a friend who does can bring back some for you. Another heads up, strings in Japan are really expensive, like unreasonably so. One set of this was $30 US, and Gumzone and Gumboost are not an outlier. As an example, Gosun also makes the beloved OG Sheep Micro for tennis. That string is $5 US on Tennis Warehouse, but it costs around $25 US in Japan despite being made there. Is Gumzone worth a try? Well, if you can get your hands on a set, then yeah, definitely, it's super unique. As far as my understanding goes, this gum rubber coating is unique to Gosen. They were the ones that developed this manufacturing process to begin with, and on the back of the package it says that this technology is patent pending. If this piques your interest, then I do apologize for showing you folks something that is hard to get. But I thought this was a very interesting find, and the playtest was worth sharing. I've left some reference links down in the description for you to learn more about Gumzone and Gumboost. Alright, that's it. See you in the next one.